Hello students, hope you all are doing well. Here in this video, if you are going to present you another group found under P block. For this time, if you are going to talk about the group 15. Ah, it's 15th group chemistry that we are going to discuss here in this as well as in our next video. If we have planned to discuss this 15th group in two videos, as at the very first, we are going to recognize those 15 group elements and their properties, varying of various properties of the group. Then after, in some other major concern about one element under our syllabus, in our A-level syllabus. Students, it's nothing else but nitrogen. So, if we are going to focus on nitrogen in our next video. Okay, anyway, let's find out what are the 15 group elements that you would find there. Students, when you talk about 15 group elements, you would find nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, bismuth being there. Those are nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, bismuth. When you check for their properties, on two bases, actually, we could call them on two contexts. We could name as metals, non metals. Okay, let's find them out. So, based on based on their uh, physical properties physical properties of what? of elements we could categorize them as non-metals here also non-metals non-metal, non-metal this is a Metalloid, metalloid. Ah, this is a metal. So, students, based on those elements, they are physical properties as whether they conduct heat and electricity, ductile and malleable, sonorous sound when those were beaten, emit. So, whether they are having metallic lustre. If those all properties are there, it's a metal for sure. Then students, if those totally opposites, opposite properties if you get, they are, ah, it's a non-metal. Then if you get in-between properties, some properties of metal, some properties of non-metals, if you get, then those are called metals. So based on such physical characteristics, physical properties, we could name those elements as metals, non-metals, metalloids and noble gases as well, but we don't have noble gases here in this group. If you could find they are in 18th group, noble gases. Students, there is another way you could interpret or you could categorize them as metals, non-metals. What's that? Ah, it's based on their chemical properties of oxides. What are the possible chemical properties of oxides? Students, it could be acidic for sometimes. Acidic oxides are basically formed by not basically means not basic, huh? basically formed by non-metals, non-metals. Basic oxides are generally formed by metals. Okay, some elements, they form oxides. Then they exhibit both acidic basic properties. Then we call them amphoteric oxides. Students, if you find any element forming, it's all the oxides has as amphoteric. Then we could name the element as an amphoteric at most of, most of the time those are metals. For that reason, amphoteric metals, others are noble gases. So on that basis, it is based on uh, chemical properties, chemical properties of the oxide, oxide form. Then, Nitrogen forms few various oxides actually. It's a N2O, NO, N2O3, NO2, N2O4, N2O5. Out of those, N2O and NO, nitrous oxide and nitric oxide are neutral. Then it's a N2O3 to N2O5, N2O3, NO2, N2O4, N2O5. Those are acidic oxides. Therefore, most of oxides nitrogen form are acidic. Therefore, it's a non-metal. It's a well-known non-metal. So, post 
phosphorus regarding phosphorus it forms two terms p2o3 p2o5 p4o6 p4o10 when you multiply that p2o3 by 2 you get p2 p4o6 p2o5 by 2 p2o4 uh, uh, p2o3 5 by 4 no not 4 it's 2 it is p4o10 ah that's right p4o10 and p4o6 are another two oxides you could talk about regarding uh, uh, phosphorus Okay, then students, it's all those, all those oxides phosphorus formed are acidic. Therefore, it's a non-metal. It's a non-metal. But when it goes down, the non-metallic character of these elements, as well as their oxides, acidity, would get decreased. We are going to find that out soon. Anyway, although Antimony, arsen, antimony, and arsen. Although they form, they are H2O3, Sp2O3. Those oxides are amphoteric in chemical properties, but they form, they are uh, oxides derived from the maximum oxidation states are H2O5, as well as Sp, Sp2O5, are acidic. Therefore, students, we could call still then. As non metals, non metals, non metal. Okay, then the last one it is having a basic oxide too. It is Bi2O3, it's a basic oxide. So you could call it a metal. Okay, so it's we could characterize those elements in, into non metals, metals based on one's physical properties of the element and the other times based on chemical properties of the oxide they form. Then students, when you check for those elements or physical state that they exist at, uh, if you could find N existing as N2, it's a gas and gaseous state, you would find N2. Then students, phosphorus could be found out as either white phosphorus, white phosphorus or uh, red phosphorus as well as black phosphorus so white phosphorus is P4 so these uh, all others including phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, bismuth those all are solids at room temperature and they are solids when you check for their melting points, it's you would find in general their melting points going to get increased down the group in general. So, its students, you would find the melting point of this nitrogen being uh, below minus 200. Minus 200. It is, let's say, minus 210 around or such. Minus value you would find standing for the melting point of nitrogen. When you check for the melting point of uh, white phosphorus, it is 44. It is the others, red phosphorus makes it, it is 590. So when you check for others like arsenic, it is uh, 623 around its melting point. Like students, it is for antimony, you would find it being 630. So, from nitrogen to antimony, you would find an increase of their melting point, points. Students, it's, when you check for this one, it is uh, 217, you could find. Ah, it's quite low, but these all phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, bismuth could be found at solid state at room temperature except nitrogen. Nitrogen is the only gas that you could find at room temperature. When you check for their electronegativities, students, it's the maximum electronegativity here is given by, shown by nitrogen. It is 3.0, the value. So, here the value is 2.2, 2.2, 2.0, 2.0. In general, you could say that electronegativity get decreased down the road, but it's they are having close values. It's both phosphorus and arsenic are having 
2.2 and antimony and bismuth are having 2.0. So anyway, down the road, it's you will find down the elements having low electronegativities while nitrogen is the maximum in, in its electronegativity. So then students, it's being maximum in electronegativity, nitrogen exhibit significant differences, changes compared to others. Okay. Students, when you check for their radii, down the road, their radii, let's say covalent radius, would decrease down the road, uh, would increase down the road with increase of number of shells occupied. Okay. So, then for them, it's their non-metallic character decreases down the road. It's their metallic character increases down the road. Okay. Okay. So, it's we are going to talk about they are chemistry, they are compounds patterns followed based on few compounds. Its students, we are going to check their trioxides. Let's denote those uh, elements by the uh, common letter M. So, it is their trioxides are M2O3 type of oxides they form. Then it is, we are going to consider their pentoxides as well. It is M2O5 type compounds. Then students, it's not only that, it is we are going to talk about their hydrides as well. Okay, then it's last but not least, we are going to talk about their halides. And the halides, it's we are going to find their trichlorides out. Their patterns follow down the groups. Let's find them out. How those trioxide, pentoxide, hydrides and chlorides would vary or would change their patterns down the road. Okay, let's find them out. Students, regarding trioxide, when you talk about, it's, you would find this forming uh, N2O3, the trioxide, P2O3, AS2O3, SB2O3, Bi2O3. When you, when you check for their properties, if you could find these N2O3 acidic, P2O3 acidic, H2O3 amphoteric, Sb2O3 amphoteric, and Bi2O3 being weak basic, it's a basic. Okay. Students, when you check for their chemical properties of the trioxide, it's you will find those varying from acidic to basic to amphoteric. Okay, it is N2O3, P2O3 acidic, H2O3, SP2O3 amphoteric, and Bi2O3 basic. Then let's find them out. They are pentoxides. Ah, it's before that. It is down the group, it's non metallic character decreases. Non-metals oxides generally are acidic while metallic oxides are basic. You could find that clearly here. Varying with varying of those properties, chemical properties of the trioxides. So down the road with increase of metallic character, decrease of non-metallic character, acidity of trioxide get decreased, increasing basicity of them. Okay students, let's find them out their pentoxides properties. Okay, so you could name them as, you could give their pentoxides as N2O5, P2O5, AS2O5, SB, SP2O5, BI2O5. Ah, these are the pentoxides they form. Okay, when you check, they are pentoxides, if you could find these all, being acidic. This is strongly acidic. Strongly acidic. This is acidic. 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 This is weakly acidic. Weakly acidic. Okay. It's down the road. They all are acidic anyway. They all their pentoxides are acidic but down the road acidity decreases. 
in that aspect you could say the uh, whole basicity increases acidity decreases if acidity decreases basicity would increase down the road students if you could find this being quite unstable ah it's an unstable bi2 is 5 or 5 unstable so their stability decreases down the road okay Anyway, those all are acidic oxides, but the acidity decreases down the 15th group. Okay, students, let's find out the properties of those 15 group hydrides. 15 group hydrides, I will give them as NH3, PH3, ASH3, SPH3, BIH3. We call them Ammonia, phosphine, arsine, strebine, bismuthine. It's we could find out their properties being quite the opposite of oxides properties. Hydrides, when you take those hydrides, you would name this as find out its property being basic. It is weakly basic. Earlier these were named as a uh, Neutral, neutral, but they are now are called amphoteric. Amphoteric hydrides, amphoteric. Students, this one is weakly acidic. Weakly acidic. Ah, that's how there are properties of hydrides vary down the road. Hydrides acidity increases, basicity decreases. But it was earlier for their oxides, trioxide, acidity decreases, decrease, basicity increased. Okay, then students, they are for all these trioxides, pentoxides, and hydrides. Their covalent character of compounds would get decreased down the group, increasing the ionic nature, ionic character. Then regarding their hydrides. With increase of their size of the atom, their ionic character would get increased and the stability would get decreased. With decrease of their stability of hydrides, the ability of them to remove hydrogen would get increased. Students, hydrogen removal is an oxidation. So their ability to get oxidized would get increased. If they get oxidized themselves, they would reduce others uh, with that. They are with increase of their ability to get oxidized. They are reducing power. Their ability to reduce others. They are reducing power to be seen increasing. Okay. Then students, it's the time to talk about the trichlorides of those 15 group elements. Let's find them out the trichloride. So, I would name them as NCl3, PCl3, AS, ASCl3, SBCl3, BICl3. It's down the 15 group, they are covalent character of those chlorides, trichlorides would get decreased. This is a more covalent, this is more ionic, it is weakly ionic chloride. Down the road, their covalent character would get decreased. Then students, with decrease of their covalent character, their hydrolysis ability or ability to get hydrolyzed would decrease. Ah, if we are going to now find it out what is the hydrolysis and how would they hydrolyze in the presence of water. Let's find them out the hydrolysis reaction exhibited by those 15 group chlorides okay it's actually not only about 15 group chloride it's i'm now going to show you the hydrolysis of all the chlorides okay students so it's i'm going to now show you the hydrolysis of those uh, element chlorides and finally if you are going to hydrolyze those chlorides formed by 15 group elements Hydrolysis of chlorides. Regarding hydrolysis, in students, 
when you talk about hydrolysis of chlorides, you need to know few important facts. The first thing is covalent halides. Covalent halides are easily hydrolyzed. So it's NCl3, a covalent chloride. It hydrolyzes easily. Okay. So the first point is covalent halides are he easily hydrolyzed. This so that when you talk about an ionic halide, let's say strongly ionic halide like NaCl, uh, they do not get hydrolyzed. Then what would happen when you put them in water? They would just simply separate into their component ions as A plus ions. Okay, so strong ionic chlorides, halides do not get hydrolyzed is the second point that you need to know about. When the properties get changed from covalent to ionic of those halides, their hydrolysis ability would get decreased, would be weakened. Then weakly ionic halides they are would hydrolyze reversibly. Ah, it's difficult their hydrolysis. So if you find any reaction being reversible, it's the resistance for the forward direction. So it's quite difficult now the reaction. So therefore those weakly ionic halides are reversibly hydrolyzed. Then students, those are the main few points regarding hydrolysis of halides. Again, covalent halides are hydrolyzed well or well hydrolyzed. Then strongly ionic halides do not get hydrolyzed. Then when properties vary from covalent to covalent to ionic, hydrolysis would become difficult. And weak ionic halides would reversibly hydrolyze. Then it's not a must. If any halide is covalent, it's not a must to be hydrolyzed well. Students, although most of covalent halides are easily hydrolyzed, there are a few covalent halides that they do not get hydrolyzed. What are those? Ah, it's CCL4, CBr4, Cl4. Such halides formed by carbon do not get hydrolyzed. Why is that? Students, to hydrolyze carbon need to have an empty atomic orbital. Anyway, carbon's valence shell, last shell, is the second shell. There is no, there are no empty atomic orbitals. Ah, if second shell would have any empty D, anyway, there is no such called 2D. So if there were empty D orbital, carbon also could get hydrolyzed. But carbon forms those chlorides CCL4, CBr4, Cl4, even Cl4, they do not get hydrolyzed for that reason. Okay, all the other covalent halides would hydrolyze, would get hydrolyzed easily. Okay, students, further, this hydrolysis, what, what kind of reaction is that? This hydrolysis is a lysis reaction. What is a lysis? Lysis is a cutting, cutting. Cutting means splitting. Ah, it is, we are going to split those molecules, going to get hydrolyzed. So, here it is hydrolysis. So, cutting is done by the scissor, water. Ah, it is water scissors are used in hydrolysis. Students, a hydrolysis is a reaction with water. There, water also will participate in the reaction as a reactant playing the role of a reactant. They are water ores would get separated into H plus N or H minus and would combine with those splitted species means separated species. Okay, it's the time for us to find it out what kind of reaction this hydrolysis is. So let's talk about their hydrolysis of those elements found in 15 group chlorides. In 15 group, they are chlorides. Let's find out they are hydrolysis. Okay, students, its first one is NCl3. NCl3. As I have already told you, NCl3 is a covalent halide. So, covalent chloride. Therefore, it would get hydrolyzed easily. So, in this hydrolysis, during the hydrolysis, 
its oxidation state would not be affected, would not get changed. So let's find it out what's going to happen. Students, when you check for the C, NCl3 is N's oxidation state. It's you could find out N is the third most electronegative atom in the world. So N is more electronegative than boron. So therefore, when you find out the difference of electronegativity, this bond, covalent bond, would be polarized as giving a slight negative charge on nitrogen as well as slight positive charge on chlorine. Its others also would be polarized similarly. Its a slight negative charge would result, would be kept on the nitrogen end of the bond as well as the slight positive charge would be kept on the chloride end of the bond. Therefore, though it is not a fully separation into ions, it is this nitrogen here, it takes that bond electron cloud but partially up. Therefore, by this bonding it is minus 1, by this bonding minus 1, that by this bonding minus 1, the nitrogen uh, oxidation state here would be seen as minus 3. With respect to nitrogen, this is plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, the oxidation state. My point here is very clear as here in NCl3, you could find nitrogen having its oxidation state minus 3, therefore 3 minus. Chlorine is having its oxidation state plus 1. As I have told you, hydrolysis is a reaction with water. They are both also participate in the reaction as a reactant giving H plus N or H minus. Students, water would provide H plus and OH minus. Out of those H plus and OH minus, plus would be born with minus are here, minus would be born with plus here in that way. And therefore, the possible products, products you would get are in H3. Ice ammonia you get, nothing else. Then students, it is this O minus O minus would combine with Cl plus giving you HOCl ah, is the other product HOCl so then this is a covalent chloride would easily get hydrides so students without bipartite you would get the product standing for those hydrolysis in that way you simply check for the oxidation states of each atom accordingly you split both and join with them. Uh, it's you would easily get the product standing for hydrolysis without bipartite of those. Then students, when you do the hydrolysis of others, it's uh, you would find out PCl3. Anyway, when you balance this reaction, it's you would find that out you need 3 Cl and 3 O's when you write 3 here and 6 H's and 1 N. Okay, then when you check for the hydrolysis of PCl3, students with water it's going to get hydrolyzed. P's oxidation state is plus 3 here. Cl is having minus 1. Okay, then water would be split into H plus and OH minus. Plus would be born with minus. Ah, therefore, it's one product is clear. It's HCl. Then students, when you check for the other product, you will simply find it being OH, OH, OH. But rather than being this way, it goes under the rearrangement like this. So students, it becomes a P double bond O. It's compulsory. When you talk about oxy acid of phosphorus, it's compulsory to have five bonds around phosphorus and it needs to have at least one PO double bond. Then the acidity is caused by the hydrogen attached on oxygen. Ah, it is OH groups. When you have OH group, those edges on OS could easily leave at the next time. So the acidity would be caused by those edges. 
So the number of OH group is the number of H pluses could be given by one acid molecule. It is called the basicity or proticity of the acid. Here it is N3PO3 hydrophosphorus acid butane. It is a dibasic acid. Okay. Then students, when you get a hydrogen attached to phosphorus, it would it would exhibit some reducing properties as well. Okay. Then the product is clear. It is with HCl you are going to have H3PO3, the oxy acid of phosphorus representing plus 3 oxidation state. Okay. Then when you balance this reaction, hydrolysis reaction, it you would write 3 here, it is 3 here. Okay. Then down the group there are ionic character increases. Therefore, others, their hydrolysis would become quite difficult. ACL3, SBCL3, BICL3. Ah, so, then I would give their hydrolysis as being reversible. It's not as easy as much as of earlier one. So, students, if you could find them out being reversible, they are highly successful. Then, following PCL3, I would write the product standing for ACL3 as HCl and H3ASO3. Okay, you could balance it similarly as here. Then, students, next two is quite different from others. Within next two, if you are going to find some precipitates being given. Ah, when you treat SBCL3 with water, if you get a milky solution, a white precipitate, that's why. Right. Students, it is you get SBOCL, a white precipitate, with HCL. So, it would be 2 of HCL. So it is in this way you are going to find its hydrolysis of antimony chloride B. So this could be seen in some magic shops as you could find when SBCL3 the substance is treated with colorless water turning into milky solution. A magician they turn, they turn water to milky using SBCL3. Okay, not only SBCL3 but also BICL3 you could use in the same magic as when you treat BICL3 with water it turns milk means milky solution it is a white precipitate you get there okay with HCl here as well then students is the hydrolysis reactions of those 15 group trichlorides Okay, so X regarding hydrolysis again these points are very important. Hydrolysis is a reaction with water, they are water separates into H plus and OH minus, splitting those uh, Cl and that element they are into two species based on their oxidation states. Oxidation states generally would not get changed during the hydrolysis. Okay, covalent halides are easily hydrolyzed. Strongly ionic halides do not get hydrolyzed, but weak ionic halides are reversibly hydrolyzed. Okay, students, it's then we have checked out those properties of 15th group elements as trioxides, petroxide, hydrides, and trihalides. Okay, now it's the time for us to talk about the element. And the 15th group that we have got in our syllabus is nitrogen. Ah, students, it's not in this video, but in our next video, it's we are going to focus on nitrogen's chemistry. Okay, hope you could understand uh, these simple few points. These actually are very simple and logical. Therefore, it's you should buy hard. If you once get the logic, students, it's the duty of you as to find out the logic behind each, the pattern. Then you would start loving this inorganic part, in inorganic chemistry. If you miss the logic, there would be many reactions, lists 
of reactions to buy part at the next time. Therefore, find find those out. What are the logics behind those reactions and varying of those properties? The way the patterns followed down the groups, down uh, throughout the periods by those elements, by the compounds they form. Okay, it's very very important when you find those uh, compounds being given in inorganic chemistry questions. You could easily answer them. It's very very enjoyable. Okay, students, if you are going to wound up here in this video with the hope to meet you again in our next video regarding nitrogen chemistry. Okay, students, goodbye.